Hey, uh, what's up? My name is Zodi, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I wrote the demo track for Cubase 13 using 91 vocals, samples, soulful R&B vocals. You will learn some cool production tips, my approach to songwriting, preset and sample selection, as well as a few mixing tips thrown in there for you. If you haven't already, you can download the entire project from the Download Assistant and see it all in its entirety. Everything used in the project is included in Cubase 13. I'm very appreciative and fortunate to have the opportunity to work on this project with Cubase and 91 vocals. Okay, let's dive in. So the 91 vocal samples dictated the entire song, the key and the BPM. Blow like seasons, yes I love it, yeah. Got my body needing wanting. The way that I got these was if you go over here, you get a few extra menu options here. If you click the one with the right bar, <clears throat> And then what you need to do is go down to loops and samples and then you can scroll down and you've got these soulful R&B vocals here and then you got all of these here and you can just sample them with the play button. Love me, love me crazy, love me, love me crazy. And that's really it. And then all you have to do is just uh, click, drag them over into the project. When choosing these vocal samples, not only did it have to match the key and BPM, but I always went for wet vocal samples as they have a really nice reverb and delay signal and it just helps them fit into the mix much easier and quicker. I didn't really change the vocals apart from this channel, which is the low vocal harmony. So this is the original sample. I want a man booked and busy, how I like. All I did was duplicate the track onto a new channel, bounced it so it was its own individual file, and then I went up here to transpose and put it down to minus 12, an octave lower. After the vocals, I started to write chords that would sit well underneath the 91 vocal samples. Blow like seasons, yes I love it, yeah. Got my body needing wanting. I went into Pad Shop, created a, used the Pad Shop here, and it's called the Innermost Light, which is just basically a cool pluck sound. Not only that, but what I did is the approach to this effect. Instead of just having the pluck, just playing the chord, I put a slight delay on it, as if if you were on a piano, you would be like cascading your fingers up the keyboard. <laughs> Basically the main thing here is I EQ'd it, I rolled off up to about 100, 120 just to get rid of the lows. I got rid of the kind of boxiness and low mid mud which generally I heard around 250 to 300. It's very similar to how I approach a lot of synths and guitar chords and general mid frequency stuff that sits around the sides. Um, I took out about 1.3 as I found that frequency generally can be a little bit kind of interfering, especially with the lead vocal. And then at the end, about 6.82K, added a bit of air and kind of brightness to it. And then underneath that, another pad shop, back to the 80s. What I remember doing to this was slowing the attack down so it kind of created this ramping effect. I kind of wanted to create this layer where you'd have the pluck kind of on the beat and then you'd have the pad kind of following shortly after to give a bit more of a diverse original sound as opposed to having everything playing on the beat. <laughs> So with the pre-chorus, I didn't actually write the chords. 91 Vocal had a cool, just random vocal pad effect here, which um, I loved. I just thought it just worked really nicely. And then I just placed that underneath the vocal. Laid back cruising in the Bentley, how I like, I want a man booked and busy. We move on to the chorus. I just took the existing idea, same chords and everything, dropped it over here, and then just built upon what we'd already done. 
I basically added another chord riser to sit underneath the existing one in the verse. Normally when I'm trying to layer stuff, I try to go for opposite or something that's going to sound different from the initial channel that we already have or track that we already have. And then for this one, we've got the high pads. Yeah, again, pad shop. I have, can you tell I love pad shop, <laughs> right? Uh, Crystal Silk. If I really think about why I chose that preset, was it adds a sense of mystery to it and wonder. Jump into the EQ. Yeah, nothing wild, nothing wild again. Even a higher cut, we got up to 500. So yeah, this is, uh, and then we're giving a little shelf at 4.45K. So yeah, this is all about that top end sparkle that we're getting from those pads as the mid side of it is already covered with the previous stuff. And then yet again, a cloner. It's just kind of giving it a, a much more of a wider sound. Lead one has less of an attack, it's more of a longer played note, sounds a bit more softer. When I layer that, I want something very opposite, so short, high attack, plucky generally works, so that's what I've done with lead two. Then we've got lead three. And if we dive in, much more of a shorter played note. But also they've jumped up an octave, so they've got much more of the sparkly air side to everything. If you write everything in the arrangement where it's all got its own spot, generally with mixing you don't have to do anything too drastic because you've already written the song in a way that stuff isn't interfering with itself too much. Then we get to the repeat, and the only development here is I bring in a bit of guitar that I played. <laughs> pitch correct depending on where you're playing on the guitar neck it tends to go out of tune quite easily depends on how much money you spend on the guitar but generally kind of mid-range guitars tend to go out of tune fairly quickly whereas the top top end thousand dollar upwards sort of guitars they don't really have that problem as much then we went with uh cubase's vst amp rack Ooh, i think uh yeah, I just used the Guitar Hero rig because because why not? I don't think I really messed around with it too much. I just think this sounds great off out of the box. Generally, I put a bit of a gate on just to kind of tidy up my playing. <laughs> I tend to roll off around between 75 to 100. Uh, then I get rid of the low mid boxy mud around 250 to 300. 1400, it's a bit of a... It, it can sound good, but a lot I find a lot of the time it tends to interfere and doesn't sound great. And that's it for the mids, really. Okay, let's dive into the bass. The first bass was the Retrolog 80s pulse bass. I rolled off everything up down to about 4.15 there, and then I... I rolled everything up to about 105. I wanted it to cover the sort of natural bass frequencies, which is generally going to hit around 130 to 140, maybe all the way up to about 200. The problem with sub is sub energy doesn't really transfer too well onto lower on smaller speakers, so you create an additional bass layer to make sure that the bass is heard on all types of sound and speaker systems. And then I layered it with the Retrolog sub octave bass. Um, yeah, straight out of the box here. Okay, let's dive into the sub. Cool. All right, first thing on the EQ, yeah, cut all the way down to 100. As we saw in the other EQ, that's going to be more prominent above 100. So you kind of got two bases covering two different areas. You can treat them differently as well, as you'll see. Um, let's take this off. So stereo enhancer, it's really important with everything under kind of like 70, 80 to keep it in mono or at least have very strong mono information. Generally with this track, uh, the kick's covering it. And if you have a listen with it, and I put the mono on, still got, got good amount of mono energy in there. 
and then we've got the tube compressor just reining it in um, making sure that it's not kind of spiking or jumping out too much these are the drums The kick I chose was the Hip Hop Kick 14. Um, the reason I chose this was I liked the way it sounded. Secondly, because this song has quite a lot of space in it, but I felt like I wanted a kick that was gonna cover a bit more ground and a bit more space, as opposed to having like a real sharp attack transient kick that's really tight. So that was kind of my thinking behind choosing the sample with this. Regarding the, the snare EQ and uh, the uh, signal chain, just rolled off a bit there to start with. Then if we jump into the frequency, boost around 130 to give it a bit of body and a bit of weight. Removed around, yet again, around the 14 to 1500 and then boosted up around 3K just to kind of give it a bit of bite and let it stick out a bit more. If it was a really aggressive track, I'd probably like give it a massive boost around 5 to 5.2K. Uh, and then, yeah, just another tube compressor on here. try to aim to get it to hit between six and four here. Generally, um, that's where I find it sounds pretty good. Okay, let's dive into the hats. When you're drawing hats to kind of be slightly before and kind of maybe slightly after the beat, uh, you kind of want it to sound quite human. You don't want it to sound robotic and hats are normally a massive giveaway for it sounding a little bit too or robotic so we want to kind of humanize them as you can see here as well i've got different velocities just to give it a bit more kind of movement and bounce i panned each of them with automation to start go to left to right like a slight sort of like movement as you can see it's changing the way that you do that if you say were to go on there you click a little arrow like that and then what you would do is you click on volume and then I go to more and then you could just have the standard panner left and right like that and then it brings up this extra channel and then you use the automatically goes to the pencil tool and you can click do, and then you can like drag it up like that and then you can drag it down and uh, yeah that is how you do automation generally this is something I like to do in my productions is create my own custom sort of percussion or top layers And the way I did that was to go into Cubase's samples here. I'll show you, here's what I made earlier. <laughs> and I just, I just chose a whole bunch of random samples from Cubase, but I was listening out for stuff that had occupied a different frequency range from each other and also sounded generally different. This is a cool way to really put your own mark on your own productions here because you can just customize so much if you put a whole bunch of samples together as opposed to just using one. So I think the first one I started was Perk 4. And then the next thing I got was this Scrape. Uh, and then the third one, Perk 5. And you can start to see how I piece it together. The main thing overall is that they all sound very different from each other. They sound cool. They sound interesting. I ran those off and then put them into this perks group. And then I took the entire group and transposed it up by two. This is the fun part. When you render the thing and you bounce it together, then you can really start messing around with it. So first thing, tube compressor. Just a gentle bit of compression. Some of them jumped out a bit spiky, so I wanted to tame those spikes. Quadrifuzz, I absolutely love this. This is uh, another Cubase one. The presets on this really can make something really interesting. If you were to like render a drum beat, bounce it off and then put it through this, you can come up with some really cool stuff. I get really excited about this, but um, yeah, I just use the drum group Melt 2, which is a preset. It's basically kind of multi-band saturation you, and you can mess around with each of the bands. You've got all these different functions here, like distortion, amp, tube. If you go to the tube and then you can mess with it. I'll leave you to that because uh, we'll be here forever. And then I think yet again, got some sidechain compression coming in from the snare. 
because the snare next to the kick is one of the most important elements, I felt that the percussion could interfere with the snare. So I side chain it when, every time when the snare hits. Which is not a lot though. And that is generally how I approach a lot of my tops and percussion. And that's it, how I wrote the track for Cubase 13 using 91 vocals, soulful R&B vocals. Let me know if you have any questions about the process in the comment box below. Please like and subscribe as it all really helps the channel out. Thanks again to 91 Vocals and Cubase for bringing me onto this project. It has been an absolute pleasure. I'm Azodi, I hope you learned something cool from this video and thanks so much for watching.